Hey buds, there might be a certain day coming up next week, so we thought we should try some flour-based recipes with you. From a very simple bubbly drink to a full floral pasta, make your day special, whether you're spending it with your wonderful self or sharing it with someone else. Fun fact, my parents got married on Valentine's Day. Let's start low key first. We are going to use the rosehip syrup that we made in our previous episode to make a tasty drink. Click here for that episode or check the description notes. You're going to add about one tablespoon of syrup to each cup. Then crack a sparkly water and top them up. Mix well and you've got yourself the perfect drink for the evening. Kick back and relax. Or if you're inclined, continue watching and you can pair it with either one or both of the recipes we're gonna show you. Now let's add a wow factor to your special meal tonight. We are going to use edible flower pe petals and work them into your pasta through a process called lamination. Now making pasta from scratch sounds really hard, but we'll walk you through all the steps. You can roll it out by hand, but if you happen to have a pasta maker handy or a pasta maker attachment, then it will make your life a little easier. Same with mixing the dough, totally doable by hand, but a mixer will be a little easier on your arms. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I'm gonna go the mixture route, but you do you. We're gonna start with 300 grams of flour or about two and a half cups, and then crack in three room temperature eggs. Then you can knead the dough for about 10 minutes or outsource it to your electronic bud. And if it's too dry, you can add a teaspoon of water at a time until it seems about the right consistency. Okay, well our 10 minutes is up and I did add two teaspoons of water, just so you know. It's usually pretty easy to tell if it needs it because you want it to form a nice ball like this. If it's a loose dough, then it probably needs a little water. And now we are going to wrap it and let it rest for 30 to 60 minutes. And if you're doing this ahead of schedule, you can keep it in the fridge for up to a day. Once your dough has chilled, you'll unwrap it and then we're going to cut it into four pieces. So if you got a dough thing like this, that'll help. Here we go. So these three we are going to wrap back up so they don't dry out. And we'll work with our other quarter. Massage it into kind of a rectangular shape with your hands. And then at the lowest setting, or what setting will give you the thickest um, slab of, of dough, is where we start, and we're going to just run that through. Okay, so then you're gonna fold it in thirds and run it through again. And then one more time. Okay, so we're gonna take it up to the next level on your machine and run it through twice. And we're just gonna do the same thing at the next two levels. Two passes on each, uh, two and three for me, or whatever it is on your machine. All right, there we have a pretty thin slice of dough. All right, so you're gonna have a clean work surface and you're gonna sprinkle on a bit of this semolina to keep your dough from sticking. And this is a coarse flour that is made from durum wheat. Then you put your noodle sheet down 
and we are going to put our edible flowers on top of half. So I'm using kind of a mix here. Uh, there's some fireweed blossoms, some corn flowers, uh, some calendula, but use whatever you got. Uh, just make sure it's edible. <laughs> And it is going to stretch out, so I find that it's better to go a little heavier during this phase. Okay. Oops. Now we're going to fold it in half and bring back our pasta machine. And this time you're going to set it on your third highest or third thickest setting. And we're going to run it through twice on each of the next couple settings. So making it thinner than it was before, uh, you can kind of gauge how thin you want it, but the thinner it gets, the more you'll get to see of your flowers. All right, well, there you go. Hopefully you can see it a little bit. If you hold it up to the light, you can see more of the flower petals laminated in there for <laughs> your enjoyment. And we are just gonna put this on a baking sheet with parchment paper and a bit more of that semolina flour to keep it from sticking while we do the next steps. It's noodle time. So you want to make sure that your work surface has lots of this semolina. Then take your noodle sheets one at a time. Sprinkle a little more semolina on top. Fold it in half but don't press down, fold it in half again, and one last time. Then using a sharp knife, you're going to cut it into strips. It can be whatever width you like, just try and keep it consistent for even cooking. And then you are going to gently unfold them. Get your full noodle. There we go. So from here, you can dry them for 30 minutes, either on a rack if you have one handy, or just put them back on a baking sheet with parchment paper and semolina so they don't stick. And in 30 minutes, you can cook them. They'll be ready to make pasta. And if you wanna keep them for later, you can have them in the fridge for up to a week, or put them on that baking sheet, freeze it for 30 minutes, and then pop them in an A bag, and they will be good for six months. The dietitian always likes to add a few more veggies to your meal, so we are going to make a cauliflower based garlic sauce to top our pasta. I personally love mushrooms, so I'm starting with sauteing some rehydrated shiitake. If you are using dried mushrooms, be sure to save the liquid. It will add umami to any dish. Fun fact, umami is your fifth basic taste. It's a Japanese word that roughly translates to the essence of deliciousness. To get technical, umami is the taste of glutamate, an amino acid that is one of the building blocks of protein. So when these are done, you will set them aside. And if you aren't a mushroom fan, well, we can't be friends. <clears throat> I mean, skip this step. Next, saute four minced garlic cloves with about one tablespoon of butter for low heat. You're gonna cook until it is soft and fragrant and then remove from the heat and set aside. So we're gonna bring three cups of water or your favorite broth to boil. Now I use the broth from my mushrooms. Just make sure you strain it first so you don't get any grit. Then once it's boiling, we'll add the three cups of chopped cauliflower and cook covered for seven to 10 minutes or until it's tender. Do not drain. All right, with a slotted spoon, we're gonna take our cauliflower that's been cooked to a tender and add it to a blender. All right, now to add to that, we are going to put in one cup of the liquid that we cooked our cauliflower in. Make sure to save the rest for your next soup or stock. And add in half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, 
a quarter cup of milk or milk alternative, and our lovely garlic and mushrooms if you made them. And then we're gonna blend it up nice and smooth. If you want it a bit thinner, you can add a bit more milk or broth. Now for our pasta. Bring a large pot of salted water to a rolling boil. Add your noodles and cook, stirring occasionally to keep them from sticking together. Cook until it is nearly done, which should be about five to six minutes, then drain. Put your pasta on whatever dish that you would like. Add some of your delicious sauce and garnish as you see fit. Perhaps a few more edible petals and enjoy. And you get one extra recipe because a friend still swears these are the best cookies she's ever had. We start with 24 rose petals, and if you are using dry ones like I am, you'll want to gently rehydrate them between two slightly damp towels. And you'll put them in there for about 30 minutes. Then take half a cup of rose petals and grind them into rose powder. If you'd rather do this in a blender, you can. To make our cookie dough, we are going to mix together three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar. And if you don't have super fine sugar, that's not a problem. Just run some granulated sugar through your blender until it's super fine. And we are gonna mix that with one cup of butter until it is pale and fluffy, and this should take about three minutes. Okay, and now we are gonna add two tablespoons of milk. Half a teaspoon of rose water. And the rose powder that we ground up. Then we are going to give it a mix for another 30 seconds. You can scrape down anything that's stuck to the sides. And then our wet ingredients should be good. Now we're gonna look at the dry, which includes two cups of flour. We're gonna mix that with a half teaspoon of salt. Give it a little stir. And then we'll mix this dry ingredients into the wet ingredients for about two minutes until we get a nice stiff dough. Okay, so we want a dough that holds together when squeezed or pressed. And you are just gonna get all that off. And then what we want to do is make about 24 one inch diameter balls and set them aside. So. And let someone like that. Okay, well, form your balls and set them on a plate somewhere. Okay, so on to the decorating portion. We are gonna put two tablespoons of sugar onto a shallow plate, and then you'll place your rose petals right on top. If they're fresh, you can go straight for it. If they're dehydrated, you might have to massage them a little bit to get them to lay flat. Then you put your cookie ball over top and press down 
on it with a flat object, like the bottom of a glass. Mine were sticking a little, so I put a little flower on the bottom of my glass and that seemed to help me. And there you go. Continue doing this until each of your cookie balls has been imprinted with a rose petal. And once your cookie sheet is full, you're gonna put it in the fridge for 10 minutes to chill while you work on flattening the rest of your cookie balls. And once your cookies are done chilling, you are going to bake them for 15 minutes at 300 degrees or until the edges start to turn golden brown. There we go. And let them cool for about one minute before you transfer them to a cookie rack. And if that's not enough floral fun for you, check out last week's episode on making a rose cardamom latte.